Welcome to the second episode of second season of Beyond Conversations, an initiative by IEEE Pune Section and a podcast show which is for the students and by the students. In this episode, I'm your host Sohan Zoshi, and recently I had a chat with Mr. Anup Sheshadri, who is currently the Vice President of Growth at Route Spring, a startup based in the US. Anup completed his bachelor's from IIT BHU way back in 2009, after which he worked in India for five years and then decided to pursue his global MBA from George Washington University. In the first part of the episode, Anup talks about his educational experiences, that is his journey of pursuing engineering from IIT BHU and pursuing his global MBA from George Washington University. Later on in the episode, Anup talks about multiple domains such as management and leadership, product management and what makes a startup successful. Considering his vast experience of working with startups throughout multiple years, he talks about how can a student build management and leadership skills while studying at the university and how can one get into the domain of product management, which is a complete fresh career in the market. He talks about multiple aspects of what makes a startup successful and how can students implement all of those learnings in their day-to-day life. This episode is going to be extremely insightful for the students, those who are planning to pursue an MBA right after their graduation or at some point in their careers. This is also going to be extremely insightful for all the people, those who are planning to transition into product management as their future career. Tune into this episode and let us know if you liked it in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching the introduction. Now let's dive deep into the episode. Okay. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast show named Beyond Conversations. This is an initiative by IEEE Pune Section. And today with us, we have Anup Seshadri. Anup, can you please introduce yourself to the audience of the podcast show? Hey, Sohan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here. It's great to be participating in this podcast. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm, I'm currently uh, head of growth at RouteSpring. But earlier to coming to this stage, I I was uh, in India. I grew up in India in Ahmedabad and then went to IIT Varanasi to pursue my bachelor's. And Mm -hmm. uh, then the journey took me to pursue an MBA, Mm -hmm. uh, which I did in George Washington University. uh, uh, It's in Washington, D.C. And then since then, yeah, I've been here in the U.S. Uh, I am uh, in Virginia right now. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the short intro. (laughs) Right. So uh, let's go back in time when you actually were pursuing your engineering from IIT BHU. So how was that entire experience like? So I think that was back in 2005, 2009, if I'm not wrong. So uh, if you could talk about that experience. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely. So it was a wonderful experience. uh, And uh, the the key thing uh, in that four years of experience is that you meet with so many different engineers but not not essentially their engineering side of things but they are expert in their own ways in their own hobbies and all so you you get to know many talented people uh, mm-hmm. who are doing great job in the things that you're just like what you are doing right now you are running the podcast uh, like that you, you meet people with uh, expertise in ma- various different fields of course they are good at engineering but besides that they are also good at the music guitar uh, or theater, theatrical activities and things like that. So it was, uh, I was more into cultural activities in, uh, uh, during my engineering days. I was not mm-hmm. studying as such, but I was more active in the extracurriculars. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I think, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So overall, I enjoyed the uh, extracurriculars in the university and it, it gave me good exposure uh, in terms mm-hmm. of organizing skills, uh, besides just like theoretical knowledge, it's I think over a period of mm-hmm. time you will realize the importance of uh, gaining some practical experience and uh, organizing right. and all that stuff. So yeah, it was a great experience. I got an opportunity to work with uh, or interact with great people in my batch. Uh, even juniors were great, seniors mm-hmm. were great, and all that. So it, it was a great platform to uh, build that network. Right, right, That's right. Basically like the rest of your life, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So uh, you decided to pursue MBA after working for five years. So what led to that decision and how did you, you know, carry forward that journey? Uh, I will say MBA was always there on my mind. Um, I I wanted to, uh, I don't know, maybe because I grew up in Gujarat, uh, I kind of had an inclination to start <laughs> 
practice or something i don't know uh, but mm-hmm. yeah i always had that in the at the back of my mind that some day i'm going to start a business or i'm going to be on the business side of things and less on the engineering side of things of course mm-hmm. i was excited to be an engineer but uh, at the back of my mind i always had that okay i'll have some engineering skills but then eventually that should convert into business skills so uh, mm-hmm. i always had that in mind and uh, the i used to talk to with just like you are interacting with me right now similarly i was in during my college days mm-hmm. i was interacting with many other seniors uh, and industry experts and get their advice on uh, how should i plan to pursue an mba mm-hmm. uh, should i just uh, do it as soon as i graduate or should i wait gain some experience and then do it then yeah so the the common advice that i got that it it is great to get some experience before you join an mba so that you get some real experience uh, in the organization whatever field mm-hmm. you are in. Mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what engineering you have done or it doesn't matter what background it is it, you could be you could not even be a, you may not be an engineer you might be uh, uh, an artist or you might yep. be someone else but if mm-hmm. you can always choose to do an mba mm-hmm. uh so it's it's good to have some experience so that you get the practical exposure of things on how your skills or how your core domain works so mm-hmm. if you are a mechanical engineer how does the mechanical engineering work in a particular industry how that works and then using that knowledge and expanding it to gaining more business knowledge like how you can eventually start making money or how does the business make money mm-hmm. how does the economic dynamics work and all that stuff so um, i chose to continue with my core industry i was in mining industry and uh, i chose to continue in that uh, after 5 years uh, i started applying and got into gw uh, george washington university for my mba mm-hmm. um, and so that so that's how my uh, journey was it was mainly there in my mind that i am going to pursue an mba to gain business mm-hmm. skills uh, maybe the way i was brought up or something but uh, it was always there in my mind right right so a couple of minutes ago you mentioned about that you were into a lot of extra curricular activities in iit bhu uh, so do you think that that somewhat contributed into your decision of pursuing an mba um maybe maybe uh, because uh, when, when you are organizing some things in in the whatever level you are at right even if it is at uh, student organization level like uh, leading this podcast or leading cultural activities uh, you'd need to uh, do, manage things right you need mm-hmm. to need to be yep. a leader or you need to be a good manager as well so those things are always there uh, which help you in in this and um, um i wouldn't necessarily say that being part of extracurriculars was a uh, motivation there but i think it was other way around i was more motivated to gain business skills and managerial skills or you can say leadership skills that mm-hmm. was kind of motivating factor for me to remain involved into extracurriculars and not just be theoretical mm-hmm. in approach right? so be more practical in approach right 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 Mm-hmm. so during my uh, those days i used to read a uh, lot of books uh, mm-hmm. around leadership and management uh, so if you if you know jack welch uh, he is a renowned leader who brought general electric company at a mm-hmm. pretty great next level uh, mm-hmm. so his leadership lessons are pretty famous uh, at least during that time they were very famous so i, I used to read his book and um there is also one book on the toyota way which was another mm-hmm. great book to l- learn about japanese way of managing things uh, mm-hmm. which which then eventually became like a modern america's uh, management uh, philosophy as well mm-hmm. uh, so um i will say th- those are my main motivation to pursue mba kind of helped me remain involved into extra read read these extra books and uh, be uh, mm-hmm. implement uh, stuff yeah exactly right 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 
So getting to the point, uh, like, could you, could you talk about your experience of pursuing an MBA outside India, like, you know, in George Washington University in terms of the extracurriculars that you pursued over there, the coursework that you did, the projects that you worked upon, and if you could elaborate that complete experience in as much as detail as possible. Sure. Yeah. Um, so my main motivation to come to the United States, uh, was to get a global experience like to, mm-hmm. to interact with not just Indians, not just Americans, but people across the, uh, across the globe. So one of mm-hmm. the criteria is in, uh, shortlisting some of the universities was this, that the, the, the programs which have more diverse, uh, student base was my mm-hmm. prior. That was that. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could have pursued in India as well, uh, but in India, I, I would I would not get the global experience. So that was the main reason. And the other reason was uh, that I wanted to do something in the travel industry. So I was, I had been a good traveler uh, while in India and even mm-hmm. even now in the US. I, I I like to travel. I, that that broadens my mind. Yep. I interact with different cultures, different people, mm-hmm. and uh, that broadens my mind and. I kind of had that interest that since I'm traveling so much, uh, why not? I can start a business in travel as well or work in a travel industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was shortlisting universities based on these two main criteria. One, <clears throat> you should have good uh, diversity uh, across the globe. I would interact with many people from different countries. And the second was that it should be good in uh, uh, travel <clears throat> management mm-hmm. yep uh-huh. uh, courses and all so george washington university is uh, apparently considered one of the best uh, universities for tourism management courses okay. and it's located in washington dc so washington dc mm-hmm. is kind of it, there couldn't be any better place than washington yep. dc to mm-hmm. interact with the diverse yes. uh, uh, d- diverse uh, nice people crowd yeah yeah diverse crowd yeah right uh, so that was the idea uh, for me to choosing george washington university mm-hmm. um, and fortunately i got the admission year and i uh, luckily i also got a pretty handsome uh, scholarship as well scholarship yeah yeah so that takes off a lot of financial load from your head uh, you don't you are not dependent on the heavy loan and all that stuff. Uh, and overall, in, in a way, the education in U.S. is not that cheap. Mm-hmm. And the the returns may come, may not come. It's uh, it's always there. You, it, It's not guaranteed that you will get the returns immediately. It, it takes mm-hmm. its own time. Uh, so fortunately, George Washington University also gave me a pretty good salary, uh, scholarship, sorry. And mm-hmm. that was also another factor that helped me decide on George Washington University. And right. um, after that, once I got admitted again, like just like I did in IIT uh, Varanasi, I again like started getting involved into student activities. Mm-hmm. Um, tried to hone my skills, leadership skills, management skills, or whatever you may call what whatever I learned in the class. I was trying to implement whether it is marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, or finance knowledge or whatever it is. I was just trying to use the student organizations to uh, Mm -hmm. check on what I'm learning, I'm able to implement it or not. Uh, Right. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I I was leader for two student organizations in uh, one was the MBA association, Mm -hmm. uh, which governs the all the student organizations across mm-hmm. the MBA program or the School of Business. Mm-hmm. And then the other was International Business Society, which was again more inclined towards like, if you want to run an international business, this is the student club that you want to be part of. Uh, so I was president of that and executive vice president of uh, MBA Association. Mm-hmm. 
yeah that's 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 really great so uh, like you know you mentioned about like you got to polish your leadership skills your managerial skills through the club activities that you were in so like you know if you could tell about the ways in which a student like you know who is studying a, in a university let's say at a bachelor's level or a master's level how can he work upon those skills and uh, like you know build those skills like while well, being in the college could can it be through projects or internships or the extracurricular activities that you mentioned so how can one exactly go about it yeah so uh, what i believe is the leader is the one whose main job is to really lead the vision right whatever it is whether it is student organization or mm-hmm. an actual uh, expertise in work at work or anywhere anywhere it is the main job of the leader is to lead the vision Mm-hmm. if uh, you are good at translating that vision into like common language that people would understand and they also should um, be convinced with your vision whatever vision you have so that is that is the main crux of i think the leadership that you you need to be the driver of the vision and you need to be able to convince others why you have this vision and why mm-hmm. uh, why it is important right uh, so so in in your case you can say that okay this i have a vision to lead this podcast and make this helpful for the community so that they the students can learn yeah. from the uh, from these podcasts uh, they can they can use this podcast as like a guide uh, for their mm-hmm. career in the starting right so that is a vision so you uh, is, is this vision getting really translated and are you are you able to convince others on this vision so once you start getting those followers and you are doing a great job i see your uh, uh followership and subscription and it's it's great so definitely so th- this is what the leadership means so you you have a vision and then mm-hmm. you you are able to translate this vision into a common language which others understand and they get convinced with with your vision so uh, as a first step if if uh if you have to be a leader i will say before you go and start like managing people the first thing is that you start with yourself mm-hmm. uh, right so first you see what vision you have for yourself and are you able to lead that vision for yourself mm-hmm. right so the starting point is always you uh so right. you have to convince yourself that this is the vision and i am happy with this vision and i am going to lead this vision and i am going to follow this vision so mm-hmm. first is you lead your own vision and you follow your own vision you can start with right. that as as a starting point so get used to that and then once you once your vision is so strong uh you communicate that with other people and then you will get a response that okay people are getting it people understand mm-hmm. what i'm saying uh and then people you will you might get a support from them and uh then you can start leading your vision by involving other people too and then when you right. involve other people then you need management skills mm-hmm. right uh right. then it is not just leadership skills but it is also about management skills you have to because there is only so much that a one person can do uh, right uh, so in a, in a practical world there is only so much that one person can do uh, so you have to distribute that work uh, and distribute in a such a way that you are delegating that work to someone who is expert in doing that work right, right? so you, you cannot be an expert in everything if you are trying to do that then you are not leading you are you are just uh, suffocating yourself into that small uh, Uh, like a small vision your your vision gets restricted then uh, mm-hmm. because you are limiting yourself to your capabilities and not you are not broadening the capability right. of your vision mm-hmm. by involving others uh, so i i think uh, that's how your leadership skills evolve you start with yourself and then slowly move your vision to other people and then once they get convinced 
then you then the managerial skills come into play now you under, have to understand what skills other are bringing in to contribute to your vision mm-hmm. and then involve those expertise in the way where you can drive your vision even further right right so uh, it's i think uh, i'm explaining in a pretty theoretical way uh, mm-hmm. but that, that's the that's the crux of leadership i think that you slowly start getting into uh, once you start managing different things once you get involved into whether it is extracurriculars uh, or at work or it could be your personal hobby as well uh, mm-hmm. if you if you love something you do that you pursue that and then eventually you can expand that to something mm-hmm. else as well. yeah. um so um that's the crux i think uh, of building your leadership and managerial skills right 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 so how does a, like getting an mba benefit you with all of this like what are the benefits of pursuing mba because right now like you know people are in the like the batch that i am in people are in the third year so like people are confused between whether to pursue an mba or to pursue an ms so even if they are pursuing an mba should they wait in india for like couple of years get a work get a work experience and then go out so like you know there's a lot of chaos going on so if you could clarify about the the question that how does mba help you in your career and how does that benefit you uh first thing is i would say that it's not just an mba that would help first you need to understand what you want from yourself what what mm-hmm. you want to be um uh, as a person as a as an individual in your personal life or in your uh, professional life you you have to decide what you want to be right and from that you can then see that there are certain skills that you don't have uh mm-hmm. you need certain skills uh to do that so it it could be an mba it could be uh, a phd it could be something else you you might want you might just want to have like a, a small certification or small practical experience in some other organization uh, so i won't say that mba is the answer to uh, any specific uh, career growth uh it is it is all up to you to decide what you want to be and then pursue your own path right, right. Uh, so for example uh, if you want to be an engineer uh, if you want to be a computer engineer you need to know programming languages right uh, mm-hmm. if you if you want to be a software developer you need to know program languages now there are tons right. of programming languages out there uh, which programming language are you going to focus on so uh, it depends then on what kind of programmer you want to be uh, do you want to be into uh Uh, like machine learning stuff or you want to be involved into like uh, an hardware programming stuff right mm-hmm. so how you are going to communicate your hardware with the other tools and things like that so uh, i think uh, it depends what what you see yourself to be uh, uh, in in future or even in the present what what you think is missing in your skills so if you lack certain programming skills then you will focus on like building those programming skills right um <clears throat> right so uh, without knowing that you cannot become a programmer of course so same mm-hmm. same goes for like mba um, if you if you know that uh, where you want to be are you going to pursue a career in like marketing are you going to pursue a career in like finance driven uh, a domain uh, are you going to pursue it in like gen- just operations what is it that you want to right take out from any education program so first thing is that you have the cl- how that clarity that where you want to be in future mm-hmm. and then based on that you decide what 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 is it that makes most sense so even if you are doing like mba there are so many different mba programs and in that mba programs some are some universities are good with finance some universities are good with like right. travel in my case i focus more m- mostly on travel and tourism there are some universities who are more focused on like uh, startups there are some good startups uh, focused in university and mba programs so you have to understand what is that what you want to take away uh, from an mba program and then you decide okay this is mm-hmm. what i want to do and then you focus just on that uh, and again like i will say mba is not always the answer uh, right it could be completely different if you want to be a good if you want to be a, like a great software engineer 
then you don't even need an MBA. You can you can do a good, excellent uh, uh, programming or some inf information technology or something else. I, I'm not a competent engineer, so I may, right. may be feeling falling short of some good examples here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, uh, I think the point here is that. MBA is not always the answer. You have to mm -hmm. decide what is the answer for you. Right, right, right. Uh, that was pretty insightful. I mean, yeah, people see, basically I attended a couple of events um, in the previous year. So the thing that I came like uh, to the conclusion is that uh, basically getting into an institution should not be your destination. The university should be a vehicle to your destination. So is this statement like, does this fit properly here? Like, is yeah. that what you're trying to say? Perfect. That's a that's a fantastic statement. Uh, great. That 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 summarizes the everything that I said yep. for like ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> yep. Yep. So basically, I've seen a lot of people. Those are not clear about like you know why do they want to pursue masters or what is their intention that of doing that thing? Like what do they want from that particular program and where do they want to uh, like you know land up in their careers? But I think uh, this framework of you know. Like, like you know it's called basically we call it as reverse engineering like you first set what you where where do you want to get and then you come back and then like you know set multiple check checkpoints on the way so i think that's the way to go is is the i think what you're trying to say right yeah exactly exactly yeah right so like uh, you mentioned about software um, like a couple of minutes ago i would love to talk about the intersection of where uh, a software and management takes place so i think that's product management so uh, i'm even i'm not sure like what exactly is product management and how to go about it because it's a pretty fresh career is what i see or uh, like you know people those who are pursuing computer science or any other sort of engineering they don't really like they just distinguish between either it's computer science or it's management so is there a field in between that i think it's product management so if we could talk about that in detail yeah product management is a uh, i think it, it's still an evolving uh, functional role it's uh, many companies define it in their own way um, and the way i would define is Product management is a role where you, where, where there is a team of people which comes together and this comes to a decision that this is what we want to build to solve a real problem in the market, mm -hmm. um, right? So we, we can build features. This is a common like uh, mistakes people end up doing uh, is that software engineering is it, it, it kind of seems like we can solve all the problems right you mm -hmm. you, 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 you uh, create a good program and then you solve the problem but is, yeah, is right. it even worth solving any problem uh, right there should be some real use case for solving that problem so you can create an endless list of features uh, for any particular uh, app or particular software that you're talking about, but are those features going to be useful in solving real problems or not? Just mm -hmm. making any great looking feature with nice designs and like wow factor to it and all that stuff. Uh, but it, it might just give like a wow for a second, but are, are people going to come back to it to solve their regular daily problem? So the main job of a product mm -hmm. is to solve a real problem. Right. Uh, Right. Uh, so, whether so, for example, there is a, there is a, uh, people people buy artifacts uh, in the like from for for like house decor and things like that. People buy artifacts. So, what what is the function of that artifact? That artifact is just going to sit there. It's not yep. going to perform any role. So, uh, you you on a daily basis you are not even looking at it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a decor piece. It's it's there and that's it. Uh, you don't mm -hmm. you don't pay attention to it as much. Um, and then there is, say, for example, a Caesar. Uh, right? Right. It's, a, it's, a sim it's a simple product, but whenever you need to cut a paper, you're going to you go yep. find Caesar and use it. So right. uh, that's the utilization. So Caesar is an excellent product. Uh, it, right. it, helps you, it helps you solve a real problem. Well, whereas that artifact, it just sits in the corner. Uh, nobody notices it unless you really point at it. Uh, so on a daily basis, you don't even bother to notice it. Uh, but like products, like I, I took an example of Caesar, which is pretty easy to understand. But similarly, mm -hmm. even for the product, software products, you can end up creating like an artifacts 
which might sit mm-hmm. there nobody is noticing it once in a while people might look at it and maybe take a good photo of it and then that's it uh yeah. it just gets lost then so uh the role of the product manager is uh to make sure that we are not creating artifacts we are creating real products like caesars which mm-hmm. can have actual utility in the market solving real problems so that is right. the basic understanding uh, a product manager needs to have uh, and that's what defines a product manager uh, mm-hmm. but that role is uh, still kind of evolving and um, i don't think there is a clear definition on who is a product manager uh, right. is it a technical person is it a designer uh, is it uh, from the business uh, angle finance person or who is it like, we don't know so right. probably it is a team of everyone who right. critical stakeholders in that product right so i was going to actually ask you this question like does a product manager need to be into the computer science domain or is does he need to have a pretty generalized approach about everything so the last point that you mentioned so do you think that a product manager cannot exist solely but it's a team of people like you know let's say a computer science guy pairing up with management skills and there's a finance guy who pairs up with management skills so do you think like product management is more like a team instead of one single person being a product manager that that's what is that what you're trying to say Yes uh, so now things are evolving and people are defining these product manager roles uh, for different industries and all uh, but uh, if if there is just one person on uh, in the product management who is leading the whole product journey then that person needs to have understanding of a uh, multifaceted uh, approach to different mm-hmm. things on on the business overall right so right what what are the problems that people are facing in the real world right so like uh, if we say let's take an example let's say if you talk about docu sign uh, have you heard of docu sign no yeah. i haven't so it's it's a uh, it's a digitized uh, product for signing the contracts okay so now uh, in an older world how you would uh sign a contract so with if you are signing up any uh signing up for any project or any service then you will get a list of uh like you you will get the printed papers mailed to you and then you are reading through it and then you are making a decision then you are signing it off in your organization then and sending back to the uh whoever is uh, the contractor or uh, or the service provider you will send it back to them they will make changes uh, Uh, right. if you have suggested some changes they will make those changes they will mail it back to you then you will review it again and you will make the final signatures give it back to them and then they will mm-hmm. make the signatures and then the contract is executed uh, right. so it was uh just to execute one contract it might easily end up take uh, taking few days to right. uh, implement that contract uh in between emails did come in the play uh, so emails kind of uh, removed that part of at least on the uh, the editing of the contract or suggested changes um, mm-hmm. you can attach a document and then you can suggest changes and then send it and uh, you can get it reviewed and signed but again you will have to print it and then sign it and then send right. it over they will print it they will sign it and send it over and all that stuff right so it, it was a, it's a real problem people are spending too much time for just one contract instead of doing the real work of executing that contract right right so docu sign came and then it created a digital way of editing and signing the contract and you can add a digital signature to it and then that's it it's done uh, it doesn't yep. take too much time uh, as soon as it is digitally signed it's executed wow mm-hmm. that's that's a great real value to people who are actually uh, using with, those yep yeah, dealing with such contracts on a regular basis right so it's a great value so um, the the person whosoever is going to lead the product needs to have the understanding of the real problem that is there in the market Mm-hmm. and then translate that problem describe it in a way where we can 
where the internal teams can create a solution around it. Now, solution could be uh, a pure technical solution, like you just right. need to maybe put, create a good efficient program for it, or it could be a design solution as well. So it, it might programming could be very simple, but from design perspective, it needs to be uh, solved in a different way. So maybe you are using a designer uh, You're right. as, as one of the primary factor to uh, improve that solution. Mm-hmm. Or it could be something else as well, uh, which we don't know of. Depending on what product and what industry it is, it is in, uh, that will define it. But yeah, that's the, uh, I will say it's uh, ability to understand the real market problem and translate right. that into a solution that will work in the real market as well. So you, right. can, you can build a solution, but if it doesn't work, then it doesn't make sense. Uh, people are not going to use it if that solution doesn't really work as efficiently as other alternatives are there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's why you, for one problem, there are so many solutions that come in because they are solving in a different way. Uh, on, mm-hmm. So the role of this product management leader is to navigate between these, these multiple two sides, domains. Multiple mm-hmm. domains. And bring the whole right. team together to get them convinced with this as well. So, like, uh, again, like vision, vision, and then translating that vision. So there is a this leader has a vision uh, mm-hmm. that I want to solve this problem in the market. So he needs to have that proper. That person needs to have a proper understanding of what that is, and then translate into like a, a vision that is communicable to to other people. Right, right. That's a completely fresh aspect or like a take on product management because till now I on LinkedIn, I've seen only computer science grads getting into product management, but this was a completely new fresh take. Like the the point that resonated with me the most was like product management is more like a team and not one single guy can be a product manager or he needs to have idea about multiple domains. So I use, I uh, like, you know, I would want to condense this into one line like this is a tim ferris uh, approach to should you be a generalist or a specialist approach like i don't know if i've heard about that but i think this fits in completely into that narrative like you know i was reading about that recently like should you have a generalized approach or a specialized approach so i think a product manager should have a generalized approach about multiple domains uh, while he's working uh, i think that would be the correct word to use Right. Uh, specialist, I would say the specialist is to have that understanding of that specific industry is yep. definitely needed. Uh, mm-hmm. But as far as bringing all the team together, then you need to be open-minded in understanding right. all the possible solutions uh, that could be framed internally. Right. So right, that's, right. That's, that's like a day-to-day job for that person to bring the team together, brainstorm, find a solution and then maybe you can if you are like stuck with any decision you can do a voting on particular idea and then go ahead with it right interesting so like moving to the next question considering that you have a vast experience like you know in the corporate industry like you have worked with startups and all so what do you think makes a startup successful or um, i could just reframe this question as how do you build a successful business so can you just expand on this particular answer because this is going to be the crisp of the entire episode yeah, uh, uh, it, it is tough to make a startup a success always. Uh, so uh, it, it is great if if it is if you're always successful in starting up a business, then that's that's great. But there are many many factors that uh, play a role in the success of a startup. So th- there are there are some factors that you can control. There are some that you cannot control. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think one of the crucial ones to to build a successful startup is really the team. Uh, the team needs to be very optimistic and very closely tied together uh, to make that a success. Mm-hmm. Uh, so team team is really important. Uh, I think uh, they, they they need to follow the same vision. Uh, if either either of one person is not married to that vision, then that person is not going to stay for long, and that's just will make things fail. Uh, but I wouldn't say necessarily that uh, success is like given. Mm-hmm. Uh, if your team is team is uh, um, adhering to the vision that you originally had, uh, things change. Uh, when you when you start your I, 
it all starts with an idea that right? this is this is the idea I have and I want to solve solve this problem with this idea. Uh, you you are unreasonably optimistic uh, mm -hmm. for for your own idea because it's your idea. You are unreasonably optimistic to yep. drive that, mm -hmm. right? Uh -huh. So sometimes that optimism fails to understand some of the challenges. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, you need to be able to understand the challenges as well. Uh, so uh, if, if you fail to understand those challenges because you are unreasonably optimistic, then uh, that might cause a failure too. Uh, so mm -hmm. the team really evaluates everything as a holistic picture on, okay, this is the idea. This mm -hmm. is how you are going into the market. Now you are, you are not, once you go into the market, you will understand that, okay, these are the challenges we have. And then you right. come back again to your drawing mm -hmm. board and, and try to figure out how we can co co uh, cope with these challenges. And and then again, go back and then see whether you are able to cope up with these challenges or not. So for example, right, right now I am in uh, Routespray and uh, this company was founded in February, 2020, just a few months before pandemic hit us. The pandemic, yeah. And the main focus for this business is travel, business travel, uh, work-related mm -hmm. trips, um, not personal leisure travel, but work-related trips. So for okay. this, for this company, for this startup, uh, as you can imagine, pandemic shut down everything, and the travel industry was the most impacted industry yep. in the whole world across the mm -hmm. globe. Travel was the most impacted. Uh, okay. So. That is a challenge, uh, right? right? Uh, so this startup was like on the brink of like shutting down the business, right? Uh, there is nobody traveling, or hardly mm -hmm. anybody is traveling. So how do we survive this? Uh, so optimism is always there, and optimism drives things forward. Uh, and you don't want to give up pretty soon. Uh, so you you go back to the drawing board and then you try to see what are the different things that you can do to make this business survive. So you cut down on your costs and then focus on things that are more meaningful in the market. So that's when we made certain decisions uh, and then we opened up the product altogether so that people mm -hmm. can just sign up and then start yeah. using the product. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's, that's what... We call it product-led growth. Right. In, instead of like sales-led growth, then we transition to become a product-led growth. Product -led. Right. So product-led growth in, is in a way like you, whosoever is the prospective buyer, you just allow them to use the product and make the decision on what experience they get on the product. They can make a decision whether they are interested to buying it or not. Right. Uh, so um, we did that. And of course, we were nervous uh, to some extent that our we are too early in the business. Our product mm -hmm. is not solving all of the problems. It is solving like a small basics of the problem. Um, are are we are we too early to opening up this product for others to sign sign up and use it? Mm -hmm. uh, we maybe maybe it is. Uh, but we if we don't do that, we are not getting anybody to. Uh, even try out the product so we, right. we just opened out the product and then allowed them to use it we got few uh couple of uh, initial customers some signed up some did not and some mm -hmm. stayed with us some did not uh, so but everybody shared a feedback with us why right. why, why they liked uh, our mm -hmm. product and why they did not like our product mm -hmm. uh, so that that gave us some real market insights on the industry and that was helping us then shaping the uh, all the product functionings as well. So what features to build, what functionality we need, what kind of market segment we want to target and things like that. And then we, we got some insights from that. And then we are using those to uh, uh, solve the problems. And now as the industry is recovering, we are surviving. We are thriving now. We are, we are growing much faster. So right. if if we would have given up on the market situation due to pandemic, 
probably we would not have survived right right we would have shut down the business uh, mm-hmm. we we actually had that conversation should we shut this down uh, that was a real conversation we had um, it did not make sense we were not sure when the industry will come back uh, if ever um, it, it was all uncertain so we were on on the like almost verge of making a decision that we want to shut this down but we our optimism kept us going mm-hmm. and luckily we made good decisions and industry luckily bounced back and now we are growing much faster thanks to whatever we learned during the pandemic uh so uh i don't know what you what you would get out of this success story but the main thing that i will say is optimism definitely drives this uh, uh startup Startups. but at the same time you have to be aware of certain challenges that are coming on your way and try to solve those challenges to make it successful uh, if you are if you are not able to overcome these challenges then you are not going to succeed so every industry has its own challenges uh, some are some are manageable some are not in our case mm-hmm. it was not really a manageable uh, challenge but there were some luck factors as well like industry mm-hmm. bounced back uh, people yeah. went back on the road uh, so there were some luck factors there but more more of it is the, like your understanding of the challenges and then how you are going to cope up with those challenges to move to move forward yep. with your optimism right? yep yeah that was a very beautiful answer like you know the way you tied in your story of like you know building root spring and then along with the how does the entire startup culture work i think that was a really beautiful answer i like you know the way you have you've been giving analogies throughout the podcast like the artifact and caesar's analogy then this like wonderful story i think like this was really amazing to listen to like really great uh this like i was going to ask this question like what exactly is your role at root spring like what exactly is that you do at root spring <laughs> uh yeah i i i used to be a product leader but then i transitioned to become like a head of growth uh mm-hmm. so you can have like a good product uh, but if nobody is using it uh it's it's a failure right so you need mm-hmm. to make sure that you find users for this product uh so when we opened up like for the product led growth uh, i also started to uh, lead the process of the growth as well Uh, mm-hmm. so figuring out how we can make this product more discoverable uh, more usable and things like that so it, it is i'm head of growth but uh, i don't know how to put it uh, this is this again is a, like a new new functional role i think uh, gr- head of growth there is no such thing there were never never such thing like a head of growth or growth ma- marketer or growth yep. hacker these are kind of new terms that are coming up in the market uh, but the essence of what i do is making sure that the, the product we have built we also mm-hmm. need to grow the user base for this product and what are the different initiatives we need to take to mm-hmm. achieve that growth so some of it could be like improving the product discoverability uh, online because you know in the product led growth people are discovering products online uh, so what are the different ways we can uh, what different initiatives we can take uh, to make the product more discoverable online so it could be participating in certain blogs it could be participating in uh, uh, some news articles uh, or review sites and things like that so there are many things that we can do online conduct a webinar or podcast uh, things yep. like that so right. improving product discoverability to make sure that we are increasing our user base which again should obviously translate into increased revenue for the business yes. that is really fascinating if this is the career that i would want to have like i mean after listening you know after interviewing you on the podcast i am really fascinated by product management and this uh, new term that you mentioned like product led growth i'm just going to dive deep into like multiple resources and like you know study from them 
so yeah talking about resources like if you could tell us about the resources that you consumed like let's say a couple of minutes ago you mentioned about the books that you read uh, but like you know if you could expand on that particular answer like what are the resources that you used to uh, learn apart from the university curriculum and the extra curriculars that you did yeah of course um so when you are in the in an institute you you get a general knowledge uh, i will not say that it is a very specific knowledge you get a general knowledge on a particular topic so if it is like accounting you get a general knowledge on the accounting topic uh, mm-hmm. if you are uh, into marketing you kind of get some general knowledge on marketing theoretical but it's kind mm-hmm. of general right uh, when you go into uh, an act when you do an actual job uh, it could be like an entrepreneur or it could be like a manager or or something else uh, you face some challenges mm-hmm. in your own way uh, which are unique to maybe yourself or maybe unique to that spe- specific business or maybe that specific industry and then you need to in order to become successful you need to keep learning new things so to do that you can either read books you can you can uh, follow some newsletters you can follow your uh, favorite person whoever is in your industry or in your domain whoever you you follow them and uh, you get insights on how they are solving this problem how they are dealing with this what kind of framework they have built for this and right. things like that. so uh, Uh, for for me like i said i was i was a mining engineer right in india i was a mining engineer and then i wanted to i always had a vision i i i did my graduation in iit varanasi so i was always surrounded by like super great minds uh, in technology yeah. as well so i was i was tech savvy but mining engineering is not that tech savvy but i was always surrounded by tech savvy people right and i i'm one of them i like I, I like experimenting with new technologies uh, and uh, whatever new gadgets we get. I like to exp- play play around with them, buy them, and uh, use them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, technology was always there for me, but um, I was a mining engineer. As from my professional experience, I was a mining engineer. So when I came as a product manager in one of the early stage startups. Uh, i i it was challenging i had the business skills but i had very little know how on product management like how how to communicate uh, this uh, uh business problems with engineers software developers and uh, how to build a feature like mm-hmm. uh, i had to face this challenge like how do i communicate like, basic things like the the job of a leader is to communicating that vision right so yep. i was not mm-hmm. able to communicate that vision i had the ideas but then it always end up being something else uh, in an uh, in my early stages of uh, as a role in a product management so i knew that i need to understand what this role means how other people are dealing with such problems and when i looked up online it it looked like everybody had this problem if if they were uh, either they are coming from a different industry uh, in this product management role or uh, either they are coming from a different functional role or whatever so everybody had this challenge uh, so i end up reading lot of uh, material online and then also then reading multiple books so in product management i read bunch of books uh, talking about different things i i read book on like hooked up Uh, lean product management lean startup uh, startup owners manual uh, design of everyday things is 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 a great book uh, i will say if if you want to be a product manager or a product designer it's a great book to read uh, mm-hmm. design of everyday things uh, or then so uh, where i'm going with this is that you get general knowledge in whatever educational qualification you pursue you get mm-hmm. the general knowledge but when you go do an actual job you're faced with very specific problems that you need to be aware of or you need to tackle on on day to day basis and for that you 
you need either you can learn from your own experience or you can fast forward your experience by learning from people who have already shared some of the challenges that they, they have had and learn from their experience and then you are prepared mm-hmm. for it before you even face those situations right? right so you can go you can decide to go slow as you learn from your real experience or you can fast forward it by learning from already existing material that is out there in the market by reading books blogs or subscribing to some news newsletters or podcasts um whatever is that you need or you are comfortable with maybe audio books i don't know that's a new thing these days uh, so yep. uh, listen to audio books uh, yep so uh, i will say that yeah you you need to consume a lot of material to mm-hmm. achieve that career goal so it's ne- it, it's a never ending task right so it's not that you pursued a bachelor's okay now that now i'm done you pursue a master okay now i'm done no it's not that you continue mm-hmm. to learn on on daily basis you learn daily um, right you can support yourself by reading through different materials or learning from different i, I interact with real people uh, as well like if you go to conferences talk to them learn what they are doing be more proactive in uh, reaching out to people and understanding how how they are surviving or how they are tackling such problems right so to summarize this entire answer if i could say like you know read multiple books uh, explore multiple podcasts read blogs and uh, like you know attend networking events network with people online and as also learn from people experiences so is that the summary of the entire answer yeah yes yeah. correct right so coming we are like you know we are at the end of the episode now so if there's any final piece of advice that you would like to give uh, like the the listeners to the, to the listeners of this podcast because like you know we usually are uh, people who listen to this podcast are from the age group of 18 to 24 so they re- uh, haven't really stepped into the corporate world and considering your vast experience into this you know your startup culture and uh, like you know from shifting your career from mining engineering to being a growth a product led manager uh, so like if you would condense that all those learnings into simple words so that the university students who are still inside that uh, egg shell can understand um, in a better way and implement as well yeah, yeah of course uh, so i i think uh, the one piece of advice i'll give is like you you need to know what you are doing in your life uh, so have have a good understanding of what you want to be uh, you can people always say like put a five year timeline and see where you are at or maybe 10 years and where you are at uh that's okay you can you can extrapolate yourself to anywhere you want to be but important is what actions you are going to take now to get there so mm-hmm. you can create a rosy picture for 10 years from now but don't get lost in that 10 years future you you have to act now to get there so what are the what are the things that you want to do now are very important uh and uh, uh like i said for the leadership first you start with yourself set a vision for yourself and then lead that vision for yourself and see whether you are able to uh, handle that how you are missing out on anything any any particular skills particular knowledge uh, or something else any specific situations that is uh, hindering you uh, so it's start with yourself as a leader mm-hmm. and then eventually and naturally you can become a leader in whatever field you choose uh, and you can be successful so it doesn't matter whether you what engineer you are or what whatever you are right now uh, you can shape yourself by taking a uh, good actions to get you where you want to be so uh mba is not necessarily an answer neither the masters is necessarily an answer nor the phd is necessarily an answer mm-hmm. to to your career growth it's you who is going to decide what is the career that you want to take right 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 so uh, that's it for this episode guys i think uh, like you know after listening to this podcast i'm definitely going to jump into the domains of product management and 
like you know as you mentioned product led growth versus sales led growth thank you so much for being on the podcast and this is the first episode actually that we have you know which is an intersection between tech and management because previously the podcast that we have shot are you know per- how to pursue masters in cs or like you know uh, writing on linkedin and all of that stuff so the last week we pursue uh, posted one podcast which was about art and journalism so you know we are trying to expand our domains and this was the first podcast that was an intersection between tech and management i think it blew my mind and it's really it was really wonderful to have a conversation with you thank you thank you so much for being on the podcast thank you so much it was wonderful being here i enjoyed talking yeah. to you yeah well that's it for this episode guys i hope you found this conversation insightful if you did please let us know in the comment section below also don't forget to check out anup's social media handles which are listed in the description along with the link to his blog in which he talks about product management also please share this podcast on your social media handles to maximize our reach and that's it for this episode thank you so much for being a valuable listener and i'll see you around till then take care bye bye and peace